Super Kitty. <laughs> That's Super Kitty.
from St. Luke's in Ada, Oklahoma. It's a delight to have you with us. Let us begin Holy Eucharist Rite 2 as found written in your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. No, no, no. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, 
did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John, baptism, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were worn out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with their leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit was descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning, and um, good to be here. And today we're kind of off and running with a season of Epiphany, uh, particularly with uh, the baptism of our Lord. 
Now, as you know, I look at the week past and think about today, um, I'm mindful that there's a lot of stress out there going on. And if you just take an inventory of your body, mind, and soul at this moment, I'm curious how much stress you're holding onto. And just try to breathe and, and relax a bit because it's, it's been quite a week. There's no doubt about that. And here we are at the beginning of a new year, reminiscing of how awful last year was and concerned maybe about what this year is gonna bring given the start that we've had. A um, lot happening. And it's not just about you know the country and the virus, but it's also in our own lives, You know what's happening within our own lives. Just so much happening. And here we are today, we're going to talk about baptism. And I think it has a, a place, a very important place in the midst of our day-to-day -day realities and lives. And um, there's a lot of, you know, over the years, people have pondered, you know, why was Jesus baptized? You know, why would he need to be baptized if he is Emmanuel, God among us, right, um, without sin? And that in and of itself is controversial, given that he was fully human. Uh, temptation was definitely in his life, as we know. But I think that, the, that there was a bigger um, purpose from God's design of what happened around, you know, it's kind of that epiphany moment where God says to everyone, this is my son, my beloved. And so saying, things are different. Things are changing. Hold on to your seatbelts because it's gonna get a bit rocky for a while, like the next 33 years. <laughs> so, which remember that's how, how long Jesus lived. And the importance of that moment in even in our lives today. We are going to be uh, going over the baptismal covenant here in a minute. And I invite you to really listen to the words when we do that. And um, take a moment, though, before we get there. And I want you to think about your own baptism. Now, if you haven't been baptized, come see me. We'll talk about that. But think of, and even if you were an infant and you, like, have no memory of that, um, I'm sure there are stories that have been told. Or even the silence is a story. My story of baptism, uh, it's no secret that I grew up in the Southern Baptist Church. And uh, one church in particular in South Oklahoma City. And as a child at eight years old, I was coerced into going to the altar to be saved during vacation Bible school. And of course, was uh, baptized soon after that. That was the first of three baptisms that I went through, <laughs> three, as a child. Now, I think that it happened throughout my teenage years, too. I don't remember the exact dates, but what I remember feeling and so desperately wanting was a sense of belonging somewhere. My home was, was a place of turmoil, and... I'm not sure that any of us, no matter how secure our homes may feel, I suspect there's still that place in all of us at a young age of where do I belong? And sometimes that stays with us throughout our lives. It certainly stayed with me for a long time of, you know, that deep need of needing to be known, needing to be loved, needing to belong. And I think we saw that play out this week. It's uh, not a far stretch, I believe, to connect violence to the need of belonging, of purpose in life, of understanding oneself in who they are as a child, a beloved creation of God. And when that is not felt or known within, um, 
that we play that out in a lot of different ways in our lives. The thing is, is that when you get that, when you finally get to that place where you realize that because of this act that happened, that Jesus was baptized, we, we participate in that baptism when we are baptized, that we too are called beloved, that our Easter uh, identity is an identity that says, I am forgiven, I am loved just as I am, and, and I know that God is always at work, that God is doing something in me constantly. Now, we often think that when it comes to being baptized or confirmed as an adult, that we are making that choice, that we're discerning a call of some sort, and maybe that is what we're doing. But the call, remember, is what God is doing in us. That God is about doing something in us. And that is loving us always. Forgiveness happened on the cross and resurrection. And so today, as we think about this baptism, it's really huge. And to think about that place in you where you still have that need to belong or that what? known or that uh that place of where's my identity you know we look for tribes because we want belonging you know and sometimes church becomes a tribe you know and so but we are god's children all of us and so through our baptism, as you, we will read again in our baptismal covenant, invites us to a reminder of what our, our, our job is as baptized disciples and what our place is in the world. Should you ever have a question, this is the place to go. When things get crazy out here and in here, baptismal covenant is a place to go because it's going to remind you time and again uh, who you belong to uh, and who is working in you and what is happening in that working, you know, what is it God is calling you during this time? How is God leading you to a sense of peace and joy in the midst of chaos? Not easy stuff. Lord knows I'm preaching to myself too, you know, but these are, but these times call that out of us as Christians in probably a way that we have never had to really grapple with and grab onto. That, wait a minute, we are children of the light of Christ, called to bear that light, that witness of Christ to the world. And if we can't do that in the most chaotic times, then when exactly do we do that? Well, we do it all the time, but especially, especially when the dark starts creeping in, in big ways. So I want to end this with a poem that I came across written by Jan Richardson. And I invite you to read it. She's got some pretty great stuff out there in uh, her paintings and her writings. Uh, and this is called Beginning with Beloved. Begin here, Beloved. Is there any other word needs saying? Any other blessing could compare with this name, this knowing, beloved? It comes like a mercy to the ear that has never heard it. Comes like a river to the body that has never seen such grace, beloved. Comes wholly to the heart, aching to be new, comes healing to the soul, wanting to begin again, beloved. Keep saying it, keep saying it. And though it may sound strange at first, watch how it becomes a part of you, how it becomes you, as if you never could have known yourself anything else, as if you could ever have been other than this, beloved. 
Never forget, you are the beloved of God. And you're loved beyond anything you can comprehend. Amen. We're going to renew our baptismal uh, vows. You're welcome to stand if you'd like. I stand in the posture of your heart. You're welcome to turn your volumes on and say your responses. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. do you believe in God the Father? I do. I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Using form two of prayers of the people as printed in your worship bulletin on page 385 of this prayer book. Let us pray for the church and for the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Olson, our bishop, Daniel, Bishop of Uruguay, our priest in church, Mother Tammy, and our deacon, Walter, for prayers for God's people throughout the world. In the diocesan circle of prayer, we pray for St. Mark's, Perry, and Ascension, Pawnee. In our paracycle of prayer, we pray for Tyson, Christy, Wyatt, Winston, and Zoe Brown, for Carol and Busby, for Stan and Johnny Caulfield, for all who care for our buildings and lives. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. Grant, O God, that your holy and life giving spirit may soar with every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need of prayer, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for those serving our country at home or abroad, and passion, for those who are in hospital, and for those who need healing, Avery Anderson, River Northcutt, Fred and Mary Pepper, Danny Schwann, Dina, Don Epper, Katie and Jenny Dowell, Duke Atterbury, Susan Norvell, Ann Barton, Buster Greenwood, Billy, Stacy, Carolyn Lefty, Mary Criswell, Vicki Elton, Ryan, Becky Shea, Gus Jacob. Also, we pray for all impacted by the current coronavirus pandemic. For the first responders, doctors, nurses, techs, custodians, researchers, and decision makers. For those who are waiting for results, for those who are sick, for those who are dying in their families. We continue to pray for teachers, students, families, and administrators as they seek to provide safe and effective learning environments. I ask your prayers for all who seek them for a deeper knowledge of the truth. Pray that they may find and be found by you. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Robin Hood. We also remember the bereaved, especially the George family. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially Father Kim Armstrong, in whose loving memory we offer flowers for good, Father Paris family of St. Hilton. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own way. I ask your thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, for those celebrating birthdays this week, Anna Scalia. Corey Davidson, Madison Shepherd, John Cross, Wes Kerman, Cheryl Cole, Fred Pepper, April Nesbitt, and Katie Woodbridge. And for those celebrating anniversaries this week, Randy and Kathy Cole. Jason, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, we grant your Easter promise to now live by faith. May you joy behold your son and his coming to the glory of majesty, even Jesus Christ, our new mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Also with you. Peace, Lily. Peace. Super Kitty. Get up, get up. Uh, welcome again this morning. It is a delight and honor that you're sharing this time with us. A um, couple of announcements. The one I, I uh, want to particularly hold in on is that at one o'clock today, for all of those who are waiting for confirmation and for any who are interested in uh, confirmation, reception, reaffirming your vows, 
Uh, please join us for a Zoom meeting at one o'clock today for the bishop coming in February, late February. And we'll be talking about that at that meeting. Uh, vestry meeting today, also this morning. And is there any other announcements for the good of the order by anybody? Uh, there is a suit delivery happening today, and uh, I don't know if April, if you want to mention anything about that. Oh, yeah. So we're going to deliver a couple of meals. Um, Suzanne's actually going to deliver the meals. I'm going to be dropping off cake right after church. So if anyone wants to stop by the church and grab a slice of cake, King's cake. That I, who, yeah. and I got the baby. Mom just, I did most of it. That's last year. Oh, love it. Love it. Thank you guys so much for that. Much appreciated. Take care of yourselves out there this week. Check in on those that you haven't heard from. And just continue to pray. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
thanks to you, O oh God, in the, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through his prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate in the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, he made it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Luke and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting garden of your Son and daughter. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom is, and power and glory for every day. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And for those joining us virtually, let us pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people and every altar of your church. Where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacraments of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts, cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Christ, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us. In this life and in the life to come. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food, with sacrament, and body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and to grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and always. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful week. It was a delight to touch base.